All right, so today on the Abundant Accountant Podcast, we are talking about the difference between sales and marketing. So we're going to define the difference between sales and marketing. Denise and I are going to have a conversation with you between the sales and the marketing of your firms. If you are a EA, CPA, accounting professional, maybe you're none of those and you have a tax resolution firm. Whatever it is that you have and that we work with only accountants, that's what we're going to talk about today. But there is a clear, clear, clear not understanding <laughs> about the difference between what is the sales and what is marketing. So we're going to go over, let's say, the five myths of each. Okay, so if you have a pen and paper, you might want to jot this down. But the five myths that might be unknowns, untruths, um, confusion, around the difference because we ask every single person. So if you want to talk to Denise or I, we send you a form, we ask you a question. What is the single greatest challenge that your accounting firm or tax resolution firm or bookkeeping firm is currently facing as it relates to sales? And here are the some of the answers that we get. I get lead generation, okay? That's not sales. Volume of leads not sales. Um, what else have we gotten? Qualified leads, not a sales problem. All right. Does it go hand in hand with sales? 100%. Messaging. messaging. Yeah. My messaging is the greatest challenge I'm having around my sales. Messaging is not, not part of your sales. Uh, what else do we get? Uh, I think that covers the main ones. I putting got, together what I offer. That's, yeah, putting together your offer, not the sales piece. Not the sales <laughs> piece. Uh, oh, I got this one. A qualified staff person, not the sales piece. <laughs> 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 so I've gotten a lot of these kinds of answers. And I told Denise, I said, I think we need to have a conversation about the difference between sales and marketing. Because I also got an answer, what is the greatest challenge that your accounting firm is facing as it relates to sales? And the answer was marketing. Okay. Does marketing and sales go hand in hand? A hundred percent. So Denise, why don't you make the clear distinction for us of what the difference is between sales and marketing for those who, you know, for all of you listening who have an accounting firm, who have a tax practice, who do tax planning, resolution work. Maybe you just have a bookkeeping firm, whatever it is, so we can get these myths busted about what's <laughs> sales and what's marketing. So we're just really clear on the difference because they do go hand in hand, but they're actually two separate things. On your P&L, before you go to these, on your P&L, your profit and loss statement, at the top line, does it say sales and marketing? As the number one thing? No, it says top line revenue. It says revenue or total sales. Very different than marketing. Marketing is in the category of an expense. Very different. It's down below your cost of goods. So you have your P&L. I know what a P&L is. You have revenue, cost of goods, gross profit. Then we have expenses. And the expenses is where the marketing is going to go. So Denise, why don't you take it away and share with us the difference between how people lump sales and marketing together when they really should be totally different. And we'll go through what our marketing efforts and what our sales efforts in today's episode. Yeah, excellent, excellent. So, you know, a lot of people collapse marketing and sales, like you're talking about, they think it's one and the same, right? Uh, and it's actually two separate things. Marketing is simply everything that you do to that to ex, to um, bring potential prospects or potential clients through your door. Imagine like a retail store. There's no sales being made unless they walk through your door. Yeah. It's about building a relationship, right? building your brand, like all of those things come under marketing, your messaging, um, exposure. Once the person now, that's like in a broad sense, right? Like a, think about broadcasting, right? When you're putting radio signals out there, 
you're not speaking to one individual. You're putting it all out for anybody to hear. Love it. And sales is when you're speaking to one individual. So you put out your broadcast and then one individual contacted you to inquire or maybe they saw what your messaging was, the marketing efforts that you put in. And now they would like to talk to you about hiring you in your firm. They want to hire you to get them out of jail or potentially get to jail with a tax resolution issue. And they have a ton of mail from the IRS. They're highly allergic to their mail and they haven't opened to any of it. And now they're contacting you because they found you. They found you in a sea of people. And the second they contact you is actually when the sales conversation starts. So that's myth number one. There you have it. Sales and marketing are not the same. <laughs> okay. Correct. <laughs> sales, sales is exact. It is actually turning that lead into profit or into right? sales is on your P and L because you have to have sales that's right. prior to having profit. So first, whatever money you collect will go to your top line revenue. Your top line revenue is when that person converts. And the money hits your bank account, and now it's at the top of your P&L. So let, we're 100% we're clear. Now, let's talk about myth number two. Well, Michelle, you know, I've, I, I had this uh, example. I was talking to someone over the weekend, and they said, well, Michelle, you know, I've, I've been doing my sales and my marketing. I've had 20 phone calls, and I have no new clients. <laughs> I go, Okay. It doesn't sound like you have a marketing problem. The, the problem is actually in the sales process. There's an enrollment challenge. There's the challenge of what do I say when the client calls me to ask me how much I should charge? There's a challenge in the conversation of the process to have them say, yes, Denise, I want you to help me and I want you to you know, solve this problem. So the sales process is also an opportunity to uncover the problems that maybe your clients have. And then in order for them to have an exchange of currency, the only way the sales process happens if there's an exchange of money and currency in that conversation, the money goes into your bank account and then it hits your P&L as revenue. Now, the person I'm referring to also spent about $51,000 to get 20 new clients. Marketing expense, that $51,000 would sit below the revenue not line, so they're actually in the hole $51,000 from their sales efforts. So when I ask the question to people, what is the single greatest challenge that your accounting firm is currently facing as it relates to sales, the first place you want to go look is that your total revenue or your total sales line on your P&L. Um, not, it's not the leads. It's not any of that. Now, the conversion challenge of your leads might be a sales problem in the example that I just gave. They have right. plenty of leads coming in, but the sales are zero for 20. Oh, for 20. It's a horrible strikeout. That is not good yeah. odds right there. So that... That would be the biggest problem. Zero sales. <laughs> Zero sales. Yeah, not yeah. leads. So when you think about your sales challenges in your firm or in your tax practice or in your resolution practice, whatever it is for you, think about, well, sales is related to the top line revenue or total sales, while my marketing efforts would be the leads, the quality of the leads. Um, what other things do I have here from some well, of you? Yeah, let's talk about what marketing actually is, right? Okay. Yeah, we can. Exposure. Let, let's, let's go through then the right. third myth. What is the real yeah. definition of marketing? What What is a marketing right. effort so you can understand the difference of where you should focus your time? Because until we understand how to answer that question, what's the greatest challenge around my sales? It's really hard to define, do I have a marketing problem or do I have a sales problem? So what, what do you think marketing entails? And we're going to give you 10 different things 
that could be a marketing effort. So again, a marketing effort would be in the expense category in your P&L. It's not money hitting your bank account. Now the marketing efforts could convert into sales and we actually looked up one of your buddies, H&R Block. Has anyone heard of them before? I bet you all have. Do you wanna know why, Denise? How much money did H&R Block invest in their marketing efforts? $150 million. And that was in 2019. So we got some yeah. da data from a couple years ago. So in 2019, they spent uh, $150 million. Is that what you said? Yes. $150 million. And those marketing efforts, probably along with some other efforts of emails and other things, generated that organization. That's our favorite. I know it's totally not our favorite, but we're just showing you the difference between generated yeah. them how much of their total sales at the top of their P&Ls? Three billion dollars. Three billion dollars. Yeah. With a B. Yeah. <laughs> so they spent yeah. about five. We did the math on that. And I hope we got our zeros right because there's a lot of zeros and billions. And I'm not sure, but we've calculated 5%. So 5% of the money they earn, not the money they made, the money they made would be their net income, right? Their bottom line. But the money that hit their bank account before they paid employees or whatever their cost of goods are and all their other expenses, they set aside 5% for those efforts. Now, the marketing expense was used on such things like this. So Denise, what are some items that... Yeah, and, and I want to also point out something. They've been a well-known brand for, I don't even know how many years now, right? A very so long time. They've even, they're probably spending less marketing on marketing than if they were new or a startup or trying to, you know, become a household name, right? Of course. So they're only, they're only investing 5% for that, those kind of numbers. So, but think about it. That's the first thing, exposure. Like you got to, marketing is letting people know you're open for business. You have to like, they have to know you exist. And, you know? and what you do. So marketing is also part of what it is that you do, your reputation, your differentiation. How are you different? If you focus on tax resolution, you're very different than someone focusing on tax planning. If you're a bookkeeper and you've added profit first because you became a profit first professional, you've now differentiated yourself. Um, so that helps with positioning in the marketplace and changing that. There's also other marketing strategies like going to a networking event or what are some of the other ones, Denise? Yeah, networking, referral partners, podcasting. Podcasting. <laughs> right? We are doing a marketing effort right now. If you've been That's to right. the abundantaccountant.com forward slash masterclass, you have maybe saw our webinar. That's a marketing effort. That's You're right. getting to know us. We're positioning ourselves in the marketplace. You're getting to understand that Denise and Michelle know what they're talking about. No, I'm just kidding. But no, I'm not really kidding. You're <laughs> getting to understand us and getting to connect with us in a way. Um, if you see an ad, on Facebook from me. That's a marketing effort. We, Denise yep. and I actually just started our marketing efforts maybe about 90, no, 60 days ago. Never did it before from a paid standpoint. We have had marketing efforts, which are asking for referrals, attending events. Doing speaking events. Speaking events. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we don't use like in the, back in the old day when I was a financial planner, I used to send, I used to send, we used to send out mailings. Direct oh, wow. Mail, direct mail. Like, way back when to invite people to an event and then do the event and then invite them to actually come in and have a conversation about working with us. Yeah. So, so we had to build that. It's like public relations. That's what marketing is. It's all part of that, right? Right. So one of the answers I got on my question that I ask, you know, what is the single greatest challenge that your accounting firm is facing as it relates to sales? I got an answer that says mostly how to find clients that need my services. 
So I just want to be really clear based on what we just covered, that is actually a marketing challenge. That person doesn't understand where her or his ideal client is hanging out. So we know that some of our ideal clients hang out on Facebook, they, they listen to podcasts, they go to different events in the accounting space. Some of you we've met in person. We have to find out where our clients are that could possibly need our services, and so should you. But that is not a sales challenge. It's leading up to a sales challenge, but it's actually not. So based on my story I gave you, we'll call her Susie, where they, Susie spent $51,000 in marketing efforts, which is now in the expense category, and had $0 to show on top line revenue, that would be what we call a conversion problem. So Denise, can you share a little bit about what is a conversion? So um, it's, get, it's having someone that is interested actually be a yes to working with you and handing over your credit card, their credit card <laughs> or their ACH and engaging, like actually becoming a paying client. Yeah. That's a conversion. A conversion is not giving away advice for free. Not, not, yeah. I just I had mean, a phone call, somebody. Denise. I, I just had a phone call yeah. literally 30 minutes ago, and he's been doing the same thing for 30 years. He said, Michelle, I love to give love to people and help them a little bit on the front and know that they're going to send me my ideal client in the future or that they'll engage with me at a high fee. And unfortunately, that's never happened before. And I said, Bob, you're right. It will never happen because there isn't a high enough value in the exchange of the currency. If you want people to value you and your services and you have higher conversions, that means there has to be a higher price tag attached to your services so they value it and they take you seriously. Anytime we do it out of love and for free, I call that a donation. For example, and Denise does it and helps out in the community and, you know, going to feed the homeless or I help volunteer on the suicide hotline once a week. I am volunteering my time. I'm not expecting any money to come to my top line thing on my P&L, which you will either have total sales or total revenue. That's pretty much all I've ever seen. And I have a finance degree and I was an analyst for a couple of years, so I've seen a lot of uh, financial statements. <laughs> now, do you want to continue to be a nonprofit when you're trying to grow a profitable firm and help more people? The only way we can help more people is if we get our head around this conversion idea and that we have to convert our marketing efforts. So with Susie, who spent $51,000 in marketing just this year to have $0 to show for it, she would need to improve her conversion process. Conversion is part of the sales department. Denise, anything you want to add to that? Well, I think people get um, a little bit confused, right? Yeah. Because people don't value what is free. I mean, if you do, you know, I mean, maybe if you walk into a cake store and they give you a taste, they're giving you a taste, right? And that's what, but when we're talking about our accounting services or service-based is it's you know people have this belief that if I give it away for free they want more and we know from talking to probably thousands of people it ain't so it's just not true yeah and you really need to learn how to stop doing that <laughs> and, it's just and a waste there's of no time. skin in the and game time is your most valuable asset yeah yeah and Go there's ahead. and there's no skin in the game you know with my last career I had with my meal prep company, Fitzy Foods, we got into Costco and we had to do these road shows, you know, the people in Costco that are giving out samples and selling things at a deal. It's different. That's like a commodity product. You are not a commodity. 
we are all intelligent human beings that sell a service that we can offer our clients to help them get out of some deep problems. Some of them might be overpaying in tax. Some of them might be trying to not go to jail. There's all sorts of challenges, but you know, if you go to nothing but cakes and they give you a little sample of sugar, now you're highly addicted to sugar. So they basically gave you a dose of cocaine and now you're taking more and you want more because you got the free sample. That's why the samples work at Costco. That's why the samples work at nothing but cakes. <laughs> but it doesn't work with a service-based business like yours where we need people to comply. We need them to, you know, get their books cleaned up so you can actually create their taxes or do their P&Ls. I've heard it all. How many of your clients have messed up books? You have to do a bookkeeping cleanup project. Those are all. Which, which, brings, which brings up another point, right, Michelle? We were talking about this earlier. It's like, you ever listen to those commercials and you're like, what it, I, I don't know what this is. Like, I don't know. Is this for dog food or is this for perfume? I don't even know, right? Yeah. You have to communicate what it is you do in a way that people understand in their language, in their terms. If you do it right, if you do your marketing and your branding right, then when you get to the sales conversation, it will become very easy. Yes. It will definitely change the game and your conversions will happen a lot easier. So the better we are at our marketing efforts, so this is why they do go hand in hand, the easier the conversion conversation goes. So if you watch our webinar, which is at theabundantaccountant.com forward slash masterclass, or you see a Facebook ad, or you see our new video on YouTube or something, you're going to get to know me. Well, by the time we have our conversion conversation, <laughs> if we can help you and if you're a good fit and all that, that becomes the sales effort. But the sales gets a little bit easier when your marketing is really intact. And again, your marketing is everything from who you help, how do you communicate with them, your referrals that you're getting, all of that would be your marketing efforts, getting the lead. The sales aspect is converting that lead into dollars. We all want dollar signs. I was just on the phone with the gentleman who wants to grow a firm and a practice to a million dollars. He has a lot of work to do in all areas, in the marketing and the sales. But here's one thing I'll share, and Denise can share her version too. With Susie, if we don't have the sales piece intact first, or the conversion piece, or the enrollment piece, whatever word you want to say, because I know a lot of us here don't like the word sales. It's just an expense to our bottom line. We're cutting into our net income. We're cutting into the money we're taking home. And we're actually cutting into limiting ourselves and the amount of people that we can help. If you throw out a bunch of money in the marketing area, you have a company help you get leads, but you don't have a process to take them through, to convert them into a new client so you can help them. You're basically putting spaghetti on the wall and seeing what sticks. And in the case with Susie, nothing's sticking. Absolutely nothing. So not only is nothing sticking, but it gets a little frustrating, I'm sure. Susie was probably very, fr not probably, she was. She told me that she's never added it up before. And I took her through a process to add up how much of her marketing efforts weren't actually paying off. So we're in a catch 22. They go hand in hand, but the sales and the conversion piece is the most crucial and profitable piece that you could invest in, in your firm. And Denise, what would you like to add to that? The other thing is that I think it's important to understand is if you try to do the sales part, without the marketing part, because that's what some people do too, right? They'll go to a networking and then they're going to be like, well, here's what I do. Here's what, you know, and they try to go into a selling conversation first Yeah. without the other steps. What I hear from people is that they feel almost violated. Yeah. Now that's where you're feeling like pushy, pushed, or, you know, you have to convince people Yeah. No that one, is not sales. No one here <laughs> wants to be, you know, there's so many people out there that want to buy. 
but they don't want to be pushed into a sale. They don't want to be, you know, um, my boyfriend's a stand-up comedian. He has this joke about, you know, he he's pre-diabetic. So it's like if the cops pull him over and stuff donuts down his throat, then, you know, he could, his insulin levels could go a little too high. We don't want to be that police officer that's stuffing things down people's throats. That's not a great sales process. And that's probably something that your clients would never appreciate and never want to deal with you. So think of the sales process as well as your client experience. What experience would you want your clients to go through before saying, hey, you know what, Susie, I, I do want to work with you. I do know that you, you're the right person to help me. And make it a process that has them just have a decision that they get to feel really good about. And that's all we're really doing. If we can understand that the sales process for a service-based business like yours, not talking about my protein bars in Costco, I'm not talking about going to nothing bunt cakes and getting the little sample when you walk in the door, because that's the free thing trying to get you to buy more. It doesn't work in this area. So that's the last myth I want to bring up, is that giving away something for free or sharing some free information to think that that client will implement what you share or do it and come back and hire you for something is slim to none. I've actually never seen it happen. You know, the only time Denise and I provide free information is here on a podcast. And if that's good enough for you, that's fantastic. I had a gentleman come up to me last week. I was at an event. Michelle, I've listened to your podcast. I've actually sold five tax plans at $15,000 each. I don't, or was it fit? I don't remember. Anyway, he did 45000 in revenue. So three tax plans at $15,000 each. Just by listening to your podcast consistently and taking notes. I'm like, that's awesome. But how much other money is being left on the table? And that's really where, you know, Denise and I can help and support you and really pulling back the curtain to figure that out. Um, Denise, is there anything else that you would like to add to some of the myths about the difference between sales and marketing and how they go hand in hand, but how the sales process is crucial before we can spend efforts on our marketing and have it have a very good return on our investment. Right. Yeah. I mean, because the truth is you can, and we've heard this all the time, right? You can be, have so many people to talk to, but if you don't approach them in the right way if you don't have that that sales process which we believe and we teach that sales is serving people yes right because people people don't want to be sold but they do want to buy right yeah they do all the time so i i love to they go shopping do all the time but i hate if being they asked, don't buy can I help from you, you <laughs> when if they don't buy from you they're going to buy from somebody else right or it's just or they're going to be they stuck the most confident with they're going to yeah. be stuck doing nothing and stuck in the same place they were the last time you talked to them, which is typically what we see. I've heard it. Uh, yeah. One of our students, Scott, he did an extra $250,000 between uh, November and December. It was a couple years ago. And he had waited. You know, he thought he could figure it out on yeah. his own. And he came and told Denise and I, I wish I never waited. I probably missed out on half a million in revenue. And I'm like, yeah, you did miss out, but that's okay. Because we're all here to make our decisions that we feel good about. And, you know, that's really what we want to leave you at. And I know it's really crazy to think that there's so many accountants out there, bookkeepers, tax resolution experts, just like you, tax planners, profit first professionals that, you know, that you think that increasing your fees to your current clients um, would be really difficult. And I know that you probably have to discount your fees a little bit just to get new clients, but it's actually not true. So. Um, if you would like to learn how to triple your base fees and see how the other accountants we've worked with, which has been 101 to be exact as of right now, maybe 102 as of today, we have a new client on our roster, um, and see how they're doing this and getting paid up front and have a cohesive sales process, a conversion process that feels good and isn't icky, sleazy, and yucky, and without having to chase down clients to have you know, when am I getting paid or how much is my receivables? So you'll have zero accounts receivables. Then I invite you to go watch our masterclass at theabundantaccountant.com forward slash masterclass. So 
So once again, theabundantaccountant.com forward slash masterclass and see how other accountants we work with are doing it and have a pen and paper ready when you're there. We would be honored to have you come. If you miss the webinar time, just uh, register anyway and you'll get the replay. <laughs> so you'll be able to see it later. Um, but it was an honor to be here with you today talking about the sales and marketing thing. And we'll do more of this as I keep seeing the comments coming in on our application form. <laughs> when I ask the question, what's your biggest challenge about sales? I'm like, I think, Denise, we need to do this topic. So um, if you've enjoyed today's podcast, uh, we'd be grateful if you leave a written review on Apple Podcasts. And thank you all so much for listening. And we'll see you in the next episode.